Hey guys, I'm Post Malone, and my last meal would be mozzarella sticks and garlic knots with a side of marinara sauce and raising Cane's chicken tenders, stuffed crust pizza and chicken parm, filet mignon with teriyaki sauce and spicy ramen with a glass of my Maison Number no. Nine wine, then frosted flake cereal and chocolate chip cookies for dessert. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today's guest is a multi-platinum recording artist, amateur ghost hunter, and former wedding DJ whose newest album, Austin, drops on July 28th. Post Malone, welcome to the show, man. Uh, thanks for having me. I didn't mean to like denigrate you by saying you're an amateur ghost hunter. No, that's okay, I don't get paid for it. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> Your last meal, is that something you've thought about before? I, I think I have thought about it before and I've had many a heated debate. And I don't know if anyone's ever posed this question, but a guy I work with named Lewis, he at, said, why don't you just make your last meal, essentially, oh, if you were in prison, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you make your last meal a never ending buffet? I like that you're trying to actively <laughs> cheat death within a pure hypothetical that's just meant for people to be BSing with each other. It's like if you you know, got a genie, you just wish for more wishes, but surely there's something in the genie contract that prevents that. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't had my lawyers look at it yet, so we'd have to take a look and see what's going on. He's got on. people. How often do you think about death in general? You think about it a lot, especially now I'm a dad and I'm like, okay, I gotta mm -hmm. take care of myself so I don't kick the bucket mm -hmm. or anything. And you know, I think a lot of songwriting and stuff that I do, um, has to do with thinking about mortality and why are we here and all this stuff. So um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it with a guitar and a whiskey in the woods. Well, I'm incredibly excited to get down to it. You <laughs> yes, ready sir. to eat? I'm ready. I'm Sorry, absolutely brother. ready. I'm ready to um, get these good grubbins. All right, Posty, for the first course, we have the homemade garlic knots. This is from Trevor, our very own baker extraordinaire. Let's go, Trevor. Long fermented dough wrapped up, brushed down with a ton of fresh garlic parsley butter. We got the mozzarella sticks. These are hand breaded in-house. A little bit of fresh mozzarella, cut in the logs fried, fresh marinara for dipping. And then of course, we got the raising canes, chicken tender meal, complete with the cane sauce, the Texas toast, the fries. God dang, man, the smell in here is incredible. It's absolutely amazing, and I don't know how to even react, because Start I never had a, <laughs> this kind of feast before. Dig in, man, I'm sure. taking your cue, or I'll just start sure. going Sure, yeah, go, myself. go, go. What, uh, okay, tell me about the chicken tenders. Sure. Because that is like the first time I ever met you. You were on set here like five years ago, and I remember you had like 50 chicken tenders and like 50 things of ranch for like all you and your crew, and y'all were just like eating chicken like tenders. Like on me? No, like it was like in like the writer, right? right? Which some okay. rock stars yes, will have yes, like, uh, not to like pigeonhole you as a rock star, you're also a wedding DJ and that's, ghost hunter. Um, but no, some people will have like a crazy writer, right? And yours is just like, I want a bunch of chicken tenders. Yeah, you hear horror stories about like, you know, I only want the green Skittles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want chicken nuggets, man. Mm -hmm. Or any form of this absolutely sensual. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Oh, they're okay, so stretchy. Let me dude, get you some gotta of get these. Well yeah, hot. I know. Let Real me well get hot. some of these. I don't know. It's I'm a simple man. I eat like I'm four, and I want to live like I'm four. I think everybody does. I think that's the goal. So maybe this is me internalizing, or you know, just trying to hang on to my youth a little bit. Do you think that that's a bad thing at all? Because like you've obviously mm. like made your life somewhat complicated, right? Like becoming you know such a, a big star and having like so many people that sort of depend on you, and that you know that theme ends up in a lot of your music. Mm. Um, do you wish that you could just go back to that time? I think everybody's trying to get back and relive that youth, because like four-year-olds don't have to pay mm. taxes. That's true. Which is pretty badass. Um, yeah, four-year-olds are the original <laughs> sovereign citizens. <laughs> that, yeah. I'm not paying them, I don't think I'm four years old. Look at um, But I don't know, you know, I'd say it's made it harder. That's a maniac move. I just went for it, dude. I think you're not, you just got put on an FBI watch list. Come for me, come for right. me. You know, this is totally random. Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A makes, you can't buy it from the store, but if you order it like, so you make it yourself, they make a chicken parm sandwich. But like, they got marinara sauce sitting in a Chick-fil-A? That sounds like a conspiracy Now you're definitely on a FBI watch that list. That sounds like Let's a conspiracy to me. be careful with what we talk about here. Fuzzy, speaking of conspiracies, <laughs> okay. You no, know, something I wanna ask you about, because you are like, known the world over as like the nicest guy. And that certainly jives with everything that I've ever seen with you. Sure. Like the fact that you shook every single crew member's hand in here and introduced yourself sure. by name, you see that and you just think that this person has a very optimistic view of the human condition. 
You know what I mean? Somebody would take the time out for like a complete stranger sure. to do that. You must have some sort of intrinsic feeling that people are good. I said you also live in what has been described as an apocalypse proof bunker. <laughs> Not a bunker, but sure. your home has a bunker, sure. you know? Do you think people are ultimately good or bad? That's a really interesting question. Um, I think people are inherently good. I think maybe it's the circumstance or the world around that mm -hmm. makes decisions in the wrong way easier to make. Sure, interesting. But everybody I've met for the most part is mm. so beautiful. And I think people off rip deserve kindness and friendship. And you know, I know what it's like to meet an asshole. And sure. I'm like, you know what? I don't even know this guy, but that wrecked my whole day. I'm mm. gonna think about that all day. Yeah. And I think it's just important to be kind to people when you can, um, you know, unless they're aliens who wanna adopt you. <laughs> I told you we were going to We're going to talk no we're going to pivot to aliens at some point. Okay, okay. In the general theories of total global collapse, right? Okay. There's a couple possibilities. Yes, sir. Um one could be a uh, general nuclear war, right? My dad lived through uh the the what is the Cuban missile crisis? Cold War. Yeah, my dad lived through the Cold War and the Cuban missile crisis. That was like a real present threat. There's that, you know, we see things around the world. There's uh impending civil war. That's thing that could happen. People start turning on each other, you know, get pitted against each other via media and politics, and then there's something completely external factor here. Aliens. Mm -hmm. If you had to put your money where your mouth is, which one of those three is the most likely scenario? Well, there's four. What's the fourth? Mm -hmm. Catastrophe. Mm -hmm. oh, natural, natural catastrophe. Yeah. Is it actually gonna be a natural catastrophe or is it gonna be caused by like... Well, it could be a asteroid or Yellowstone blowing up or is LA Yellowstone gonna blow up? What do you yeah, know that I don't, dude? No, I didn't know that. What I don't do you know, know when. I know? No one really knows when. Well, if you had to guess, mind. like, I don't know. You're the only person that's introduced that <laughs> idea to me. So now I just want to know. I want to know what you know. It's a massive volcano. What? We all knew this? What if it's all four at the same time? It could be. We're all fighting each other. Aliens are trying to abduct people to stop people from fighting. And then the asteroid hits. I mean, it'd be a quick way to go out, and then at that point, wouldn't you feel stupid buying like a, you know, $3 million home that's apocalypse proof? I feel like the asteroid's gonna blow right through that. Depends on how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you asteroid proof it, dude? Is that what you're telling me? No, 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 no. I don't know if they sell that technology. But I don't know, especially for some events, I have a one-year-old, so mm -hmm. especially that's kind of super put it in perspective, and it's, you know, it's wild times that we live in. Mm. Um, we're so we're all so divided, and there's so much going on in the entire world. So we got food for like 30 years. We got. Um, it's not as good as this by any chance. Um, I, if you need a chef for one of those, that would be out. I, just, what did, what tools do you need? I feel like you have some bougie tools. Bro, no, nothing. No, give me a hot plate and like an old tin can lid, and, and just keep me safe, man. I need a paper clip and like a communion wafer. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, can make, make I can make you a six course meal. Make you a six course meal. Yo, you wanted rice pilaf? Okay. Easy. <laughs> okay. Um, how has having a kid changed your perspective on like what it means to live a good life? It's definitely made me take better care of myself. Mm. I want to be around um, to see her go and do kick-ass stuff. Um, and before, you know, I was really drinking a lot and smoking a lot and stuff. And um, I kind of took everything and toned it down a little bit and I'm, um, mm. you know, doing my best and really got my weight going um saying you look like a yogi like you look like you could be teaching like a punk rock yoga class at the equinox fitness right now do they have that uh not yet but i feel like if you, you put just see henry it, rollins <laughs> up there doing <laughs> a yoga Rollin class that would there. be amazing <laughs> <laughs> it'd be so sick serge tonkian i literally okay this is a stupid <laughs> aside but like hear me out i literally saw serge tonkian right outside the Equinox at the Erewhon mm -hmm. in Studio City once, and I almost just went, hey man, love your stuff, and I didn't do it. Because he gets the conspiracies too. What, what, what's your like number one conspiracy of choice? Like what's the one that you like truly, truly believe in your heart of hearts that's true? That Chick-fil-A has marinara sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. That's the TMZ headline right there. It's there. Don't let them say no. Don't let them tell you that they don't have it. Local news, man arrested at Chick-fil-A <laughs> demanding to quote- Show me the marinara I know you have it. Sir, we don't have it, my pleasure. No, no, Where is show me the vault right now. Pecorino. Okay, my pleasure. <laughs> All right, Posty, after eating a bunch of mozzarella sticks and marinara, we're on to course number two, which is a stuffed crust cheese pizza. Again, everything homemade, some fresh mozzarella right there in the crust, and then the chicken Parmesan, not from Chick-fil-A, 
Uh, pounded out chicken breast, salted overnight. My secret recipe, only egg white dredge, so it's extra crispy. What? Marinara sauce, mozz. And then of course we got the crushed pepper and parm. Do you want me to just like do a little sprinkle sprinkle? Sure. A little sprinkle. I'm not as artistic at your as you. At your discretion. Just tell me one. Tell me one. This is like the Olive Garden. You, you don't have to ever stop me, man. I can I can handle my stuff. Well, what we're gonna run out. Handle my stuff. That's perfect. Okay. That's okay, really beautiful. But this, I see little, it's a little heavy on that side. It's a heavy. I well, love cheese. <laughs> I see that you love cheese. <laughs> it's in a lot of the courses. You know, you never see like. How much you love something until someone asks you what you like and you're like, there's a theme here. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I, well, that's why I think it's like such a fun little exercise because it's like, I'm sorry, do you want me to keep going? No, that's that's fine. <laughs> I trust you. Your last meal, I think it like teaches you about what's actually important in your life. And you have found out that you know you want to eat like you're four years old because being four years old rule. You didn't have to pay any taxes. You that's know? true. Government wasn't breathing down your neck when you were four years old. Neither you know, you aliens? just like, you know, the aliens, they don't target the four-year-olds. They're useless in the mines, you exactly. know? They're mining silica, you know, to get the 5G to, you know, over, overtake your brain. Uh, what I'm saying is, <laughs> dig in, man, please. Thank you very much. Where should I course. start? Am I doing the hard work first? Because usually my mommy cuts this up for me. Do you want me to, come on. So, no, I'm your mommy today. <laughs> Pussy, I'm your no. mommy today. No, I insist. That's a Did joke. You everyone on airplane? YouTube, all the FBI agents are going to be like, he can't even cut <laughs> his own chicky pile. They're going to think you're soft. You're never going to be a target, dude. That's exactly. great. Exactly. Genius. Yeah, God, please. Man. I don't know how to work that. I don't know how to work that knife. <laughs> Why, do you have any like special connection to the stuffed crust? Um. Oh, that's, just, that's growing oh, up on pizza. What huh? is this? Hot that's damn. a commercial. <laughs> That's a commercial. We actually we did the food stylist trick where you put glue on it, so like it's gonna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now since this pizza is so mm. fresh and so hot, Oof. I'm gonna eat it like I used to eat the pizzas at Pizza Hut whenever there were sit down Pizza Huts. Mm. You remember those? That was the time. That was when we were a proper country. Mm. There's nothing like going to the Pizza Hut. Yeah. Sitting down and you get the plastic, the red plastic cup. Mm-hmm. With those like. Tiffany style stained glass like chandeliers. You guys know what I'm talking about. Taylor's about to tear up. You know what I'm talking about. And that was a beauty mm -hmm. of America. And now there, there's one in Tuella. Is that it? That's the only one I know of. In your song Paranoid, mm -hmm. off beer bongs and Bentleys, the opening line is talking about someone coming and trying to take your life. You know, you also had your home broken into and you have a tattoo on your finger. One of my favorite musicians of all time, mm -hmm. Dimebag Dale of Pantera, mm -hmm. famously shot on stage mm -hmm. in Texas by a fan. Do you actually think you're paranoid? Or does a paranoid person ever know they're paranoid? To you, is this just like reasonable concern for safety? I lean on the side of thinking a little harder than maybe a lot of people do or want to about mm -hmm. like shit that stuff that doesn't really matter. Do you think it sort of helps you like cope with reality if you're sort of making up these fantasies that are worse than things actually exist. When something bad happens, you're like, does that make sense, right? Oh, you're, the chicky parm. Oh, you're talking about the chicken parm. I thought you were God. talking about my psychoanalysis <laughs> of you. <laughs> it's chicken parm, I can't think about anything. Dude, this chicken parm is one of my favorite things. It's so world. banging. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I was asking if you kind of like make up scenarios that don't exist that are worse than reality, right? Of like FBI agents constantly waiting for mm -hmm. you when in actuality we know the FBI does keep tabs on mm -hmm. random people, including mm -hmm. artists. You can see all that stuff, you know, going back to, uh, you know, civil rights era and, and before. But do you think you sort of make up these outlandish ideas to make the current reality seem less bad than it is? Does that make sense? Mm. I don't know if I do it to make it seem less bad, mm -hmm. but those ideas are always going in my head and it it is a constant form of anxiety it's always like a pit in your stomach like for some reason i hate helicopters so much interesting i hate them so much not like flying in them but if i hear a helicopter i'm like what the hell's going on i kind of think it's like someone coming up to me and i don't know why i do that but then my dad was like, oh, it's the ones you can't hear that you gotta worry about. And I said, all right, that makes a lot of sense. So that kind of took a little bit of the edge off, but. Yeah, but like what, what quiets you and what calms you down? I play a lot of games and I spend a lot of time in my garage. And that's like my special zones. Mm -hmm. Like um, throw my phone away and just sit and do what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. And then there's no like outside interference or anything. I can go in my garage and work on metal stuff and go into, my game zone and just played Diablo 4 because I haven't touched grass in like two weeks. Bro, what, what character class? Started with a necromancer, but I hear they're pretty stank. 
if you wanted to take like hypothetically like a level twenty one rogue under your wing, oh, you know, of I'm just it, you know I'm not great, but like I'm plucky. Depends on what his name is. You know, uh, her name is uh, Shamaya. Beautiful after name. Uh, Otep Shamaya of uh, the band Otep. Beautiful name Thank and you so much. yes, you are more than welcome on my journey. This is a legal binding contract. I post for course number three. This is like the main course of it all. We got the filet mignon, cooked medium rare to medium mm. with a lovely homemade teriyaki sauce. And then we know you love spicy ramen, mm. the kind of instant stuff. So we decided to get a little mythical with it and we actually made our own ramen noodles from scratch, dehydrated them. If you will open the packet, we have invented posty powder. Ooh. And now this does look like it carries illicit drugs, but in fact, it is actually uh, just delightful seasoning that we have made that you will open and then pour over the, how do you open it, dude? You gotta use your teeth? You've done this before. No, I'm trying it. There we go, there we go, okay. Pour the packet over the ramen. Okay. If you wanna stock like three to 4,000 of these at home. Love <laughs> oh my so God. Good. There's like 15 ingredients in there. That smells really busting. <laughs> and I am busting just smelling yeah. that. What does busting mean? Uh, drippy and somewhat busting. Um, it's kind of just like, Amazing. Okay, great. No, it is amazing. Swaggy. Swaggy. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't have cool. any other like any other literal meaning. When's the last time you said trill? Oh my I forgot trill existed. That's a portmanteau of true and real, technically, right? Is that is that bun B? Yeah. It's bun B. But I portmanteau. Portmanteau. It's where you combine two words. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I should have used my context like, clues. <laughs> Are we putting this in? Yeah, yeah, you gotta put it in. So this is all the soy and the oil. Soil. <laughs> Portmanteau. Oh, portmanteau, if you My will. guy, my guy. Bonjour. <laughs> and Lily will come in and do the ceremonial pouring of the water that we do for all of our guests. It's like a, like a fruit leather. Yeah, yeah. How do, now, it was not necessarily supposed that? to be a fruit leather, but uh, Lily, you dehydrated the soy. The soy, yeah. <laughs> His is gonna be done before mine. Posty, man, we just wanted to impress you, you know? We know you've like this watched GMM nice. for a minute. This We're like, let's do something sweet. mythical for him. Cause I need, I need, oh shit. I mean, dang. <laughs> Have you adapted to like the Mormon way of speaking yet, living in Utah? I was staying at a place um, called Morgan, and we would go there and ride ATVs and do all this. Stuff. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we would go there and ride ATVs and stuff, and thank you so much. And um, some mom was like, hey, we really like your music. We don't like the cuss words <clears throat> that much, but yeah. here's a list of words you can use instead. And it was like a four page, double sided, she gave you list a list of words. Yeah, it was a, it was full of things of fooey fiddlesticks. What can you rhyme with fiddlesticks though? Is that the, the name of the next Little. album? <laughs> the man's a genius, folks. Give it up for both. You just saw genius in action. That's why I make the big bucks. Speaking of big bucks, this morning, <laughs> sir, can I pour you up some of your Maison Number no. Nine wine? I would absolutely love that. the finest rosé in all of the Mythical Kitchen currently. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the wine, man. How'd this happen? Um, Mark Wahlberg, shown me the nuance and the intricacies of a good red. Ah. Right, so let me just uh, pretend like I know what I'm doing here. Dude, same. Can you do some of these? He didn't smell long enough. <laughs> Fake. You gotta get it right underneath the light, uh, right next to the microphone. Yes, it looks busting. Yeah, busting indeed. Yes, very trill. Well, 2021 is a busting year for us, of course. I might say. Good soil climate. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I mean, that's nice. Though. That's a lot different. There it is. You gotta trill it. <laughs> Dig it, man. The steak's okay, getting perfect. cold. The steak's getting cold. I'm dead serious. This is amazing. That's oh a hell of a steak. Mm hmm. I like a good steak. It's just. <laughs> no. Yep. Yeah. You don't yep. need a big, big <laughs> but, combo. I yeah. like a good steak, too, man. I like too, a man. good steak. What can I say? No, it, this is amazing. This is for whenever I put on like a collared shirt. Mm -hmm. Like this. looking really nice today. Looks like, thank you very much. Wait. Thank you very much. Talk to me about your new album, man. Talk to me about Austin. Mm. It's self-titled. Is there like a metaphor behind that? Like, this is more of you. You're putting more of yourself on display, a different side of you. Mm. I don't know. It's cool because there's no features on the record. Very cool. And it was written by like me, Billy, Andrew, and Lou, the whole thing in Henson and we made a bunch of it in like a week mm -hmm. and then went and finished it up and I think it's a pretty awesome piece of music and I'm super excited for people to listen to it. But not, no really, no story. I just couldn't think of a name and there's no features. So I was like, you know what, it's me. Is there any like 
thematic shifts because like you dropped one mm. one single off of it, Chemical, mm. which is kind of like a really beautiful love song. Sure. To me, and something I think everybody sort of experienced, you know, that sort of inability to let go. You feeling that intense like chemical bond with somebody. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Does that signify a new change in life? Because I mean. White Iverson, right? Which is, I think, the first song that most people heard of yours. You were like, what, 19 when you wrote that? Yes, sir. You know? When I was 19, nobody was watching me. I got to be a dumbass in private. Mm. You know what I mean? You didn't get to I got to be that. a dumbass in public. You had to be a dumbass, <laughs> like, in real public. You know what I mean? But for real, and now, I've like, seen you mature. How has your music followed that? I have so yeah. much more fun writing, because I never used to write with a guitar. And these last mm, two records, I started writing with a guitar. And so I would, I figured out a cool technique that I really like is just putting the guitar up to the mic, putting my headphones on, turning the reverb like insane and just coming up with melodies and mm -hmm. chords that way. And I really been trying to push the chords of a pop song or push the chords of, you know, a uh, uh, beat loop or, you know, anything and like go somewhere weird and weird time changes. And there's a song on the album in like free timing where there's no metronome and, um, Different time signatures. I guess I've just had a lot of fun being like wacky. Does that give you like hope for the future? Because you, you had this quote where you sort of were hinting at one day walking away from music, which of course one day all of us will walk away from everything. But you said something, I mean, it sounded like something out of a J.D. Salinger novel where you were like, I just want to play games and play in the tall grass. You know, it's kind of this beautiful, like um, idyllic lifestyle. But there was also this idea that, you know, could you actually walk away from making music? Do you think you could ever actually leave that or is it always gonna be a huge part of you? Well, I think it's always gonna be, I'm always gonna write stuff. Mm. You know, whether it gets released is a whole different thing, but I think at a certain point, I'll just get old and I'll make songs and then at that point, no one will be listening to me so I can make, like I always talk about Acid Polka. I'm working on an Acid Polka album. Did that I've been working on my polka. Acid. Acid polka. Oh, yeah, it's like kind of like polka, but it's very like. Yeah, well, I'm big into industrial. The polka scene, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. I get it, yeah. Well, I could tell because I saw you at the last event. Yeah, I did. We didn't say anything because we didn't want to be we like, did. hey, we're no, we're, we're the most of the two, you know, most famous people <laughs> in this room right now. Um, except Salma Hayek was there too, so like, you know, she was kind of. She's super into it. She's, she's like a little too into it. So. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like it's like Salma, <laughs> you gotta chill on the acid polka. We're all just gonna have a good time. She's fine. I like bro. It's fine. I'm so proud of myself. All this marinara sauce and hazard floating around. I haven't gotten one piece on my mm. shirt, but this is all about, my streak is about to end. You gotta slurp on the ramen. Oh slurp yeah, man. Oh, you know what I might do? No, oh, this man. I was just gonna, I thought you were just gonna take Oh, you were gonna do that? Well, no, I thought you, you were stole gonna, my whole I thought you were gonna idea. take your shirt off. I'm trying to make okay. you feel comfortable. Well, I'm mirroring. We could do that. Come we're doing it. Are you doing it? We're doing it. We're going shirtless right. ramen. I'm out of shape. I haven't worked out. In That's two a weeks, great idea for you know. a podcast. I feel shirtless ramen. We're in. And I'm gonna oh, lean man. back. I'm gonna kind of balance it on my chest. So you put it on your chest. Yeah, this is how I eat almost all my meals. I kind of just keep it balanced here, because then you can slurp it. It's like a TV tray. Imagine you just had one tuft of white chest hair. <laughs> Dally, we're putting your craftsmanship on display here. It's just guys being dudes. This is a podcast and a half. That's hot and that's good. It's kind of, I get a little cinnamon smell in here. You're tasting Chinese five spice and cinnamon is one part of the Chinese five spice. I can, I'm a level four ramen somal, yeah. Hey, you got it. What do you think happens when you die? <laughs> that's a great question. I think it's this. <laughs> yeah, like is this hell or is this heaven? What did you Brad know? Michael say from a little bit of heaven, a little bit of hell? That's you? I don't know, I don't exactly know. I think probably the great FBI agents in the sky come and scoop you, and, but. Look, okay, hear me out. I really don't know. I, I like to think that it's a uh, sleep. It's just a long sleep, mm -hmm. and you like sleep. I really, really do. So you're just, you're is gonna be sad? fine. No, dude, no, no, okay. So the whole reason we came up with the show is because um, I had a crazy bout of, of death anxiety once. I was laying in bed, and I just couldn't stop thinking about the idea of eternal nothingness. It freaked me out so much that I just started crying. There may have been some substances involved. We don't need to talk about those per se, but point is, I started Robin. thinking about that. Yeah, Robin. And so since then, I've been like, well, it's better to just face the question, right? You know, it's like the, the stoic concept of memento mori. Like you got like 10 dead rock stars tattooed on you. I haven't counted. 
But you know, you got a fair amount. I mean, from dime bag to, to Elvis to Kurt Cobain. Either. But like, it's like you have these constant reminders of death on you. And I'm wondering sure. why that is, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That's actually really interesting. And I do talk about, about it a lot in my music. And it's very, I don't know. It's something that you think about a lot. Especially, I don't know, as a kid, <clears> I wasn't necessarily super happy. Like, nothing that anybody else around me did or anything. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't, I wasn't like super sad because, oh, you know, no love or anything. I had so much love in my life, but I don't know. It was just something in me that made me sad every day. And yep. I was sad and sad and sad. And I was like, oh shit, this gotta, you know, get better. Sure. And it, and it did. And now I'm like the happiest I've ever been. And the weird part is I think about it just the same amount. Yeah, of course. About dying. And I'm like, cause now it's not just me. Yeah. It's baby mama. It's my baby. Hmm. Yeah. For you, it's like, it's not your life that's as important, but it's the people around you. And also because they've given you that as well. Like you had the story about, you know, your baby mama, how when you were struggling with alcoholism, you know, she didn't give you an ultimatum. It wasn't like get yourself right or sure. else. But she showed you what to me was like true and genuine love. Sure. It seems like you're showing that right back. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very important. And now like I used to get destroyed every day mm. for no reason and now I'm just like, oh, I want to have a drink because it's I'm having a good time. Yeah. And I'm not sad and I'm super happy. And I don't know. It's very I have so much love in my life now. I had so much love in my life when I was a kid and I have so much now. Mm. And um, I guess it's my job. And maybe I do a little over. I don't I don't know any dad that doesn't do too much. Yeah. You know, or doesn't do their best. So I guess I'm taking I guess the night vision doesn't have to do anything about my baby. I huh. think that's that's for me. You know what? But I can get I can get stuff. Yeah, I can get stuff for me too. You know, you're an adult. But. You deserve a little night vision. <laughs> you know, but um, the rail gun that you're building on the top of the compound—that's just for you. How'd you know about that? FBI told me. <laughs> I hate those guys. All right, Fosie, we have arrived at the final destination right here. We got fresh baked chocolate chip cookies a la Trevor. He actually stole this from a former employee. We're not naming who, so they're extra special. What? And then a bowl of frosted flakes with extra sugar. Can oh, I pour you up? Thank you, sir. Of course, of course. Oh, that's mm. man. Cereal's Maybe. a dessert. I do have cereal as a dessert. Every every time I have cereal as a there. dessert. Milk it up. Thank you, sir. But now, can I ask you a question? Please. Why do you make me milk first? Well, I want to see how you milk it, because I, I, I like to sort of mirror what our guests do to sort of make them feel more comfortable, but also maybe satisfy my own voyeuristic sociopathic tendencies. Well, let me show the internet how it's done. Hmm. Don't love it. That's it. That's all you need. That's nice. So you're like a, a pretty <clears throat> scant on the milk. You're yes. You're the milk prude. You're very chaste. I'm, I'm crunch. I prioritize crunch. I prioritize sog. I let my cereal sit for what? like 10 minutes. And what I do is I make You're sure- You're definitely on the list. I sprinkle, I sprinkle the milk over the top to make sure it's all wet. Oh. And then we like flood all the way at the top. Lest we forget the sugar. <laughs> I gotta ask, mm -hmm. Frosted Flakes, historically a very sweet cereal. It's not that bad. I don't know, no, I mean, it's, you know, again, this is gonna come off judgy, but that's a, uh, I love, no, you're good. Only on God show. can judge me. <laughs> Fair enough, speaking of God. <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> you believe it? I'm so good at this. This is a lot of sugar, this looks bad. Oh, hey, hit me up, hit me up, I gotta, I gotta enjoy it, please. Sugar me down, daddy. Well, you're gonna have to let that sit for like 10 minutes before you like it. I like to end up like a cold porridge at the end, you know? <laughs> Just be one amalgamated thing. <laughs> The fact that you believe in ghosts to me signals that you believe in an afterlife, right? You can't have ghosts without an afterlife. Well, I don't know what ghosts are. Okay. I don't know if they're dead people or like interdimensional beings or humans from a, the future. If you had to, if you had to like make a, a bet right now on what ghosts are, the best part is I have no idea. That's so, what's so interesting. You like sitting in the mystery of it. I don't know what it is, and I think that's part of the fun of it. But mm -hmm. there's definitely times where you talk to something or but and they speak like your language i don't know because i've been in places in europe where they speak a different language and it comes in english so i don't know what it is i think it's a really interesting thing and even i'm convinced that i moved a pillow once just by looking at it what was the context? how serious what was the context uh <laughs> i was sitting down on my couch watching tv and i look at a pillow and as soon as i look at it it falls over <laughs> Okay, hear me out. And I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I believe that happened. I'm like a skeptic, right? I don't believe in anything, which is really boring. I believe everything what about NAR 240? Scientific... What? NAR 240. What's that? What? What's he talking about? What do y'all know? 
Why did that all, everybody operating camera, why did Taylor just gasp? <clears throat> oh, he knows you. Who is it? Can you tell us what your name is, please? Nartu? Nartu. He's an alien. Foley. Nartu Fody. Not not too Fody. But no, like I believe I'm super boring in that way, right? I think there's a scientific explanation for everything that hasn't been explained, right? Like mm -hmm. the the Dybbuk box. Mm-hmm. You, uh, it's one of the the most haunted objects in the world. But also the person who made it, he came out and was like, no, I just I wrote a creative story to try and sell it on eBay. You know what I mean? So to me, there's always a rational explanation for something. But then I'm missing out on magic in the world because you get to have fun ghost hunting adventures because you believe in something. How do I become like you? Because you seem like you have more fun. I do have a lot of fun. You seem like you have a lot of fun. First off, don't let your cereal get so smushy. That's the first step. <laughs> I like it real soggy. I have a hard time with a lot of like skeptics. Like I'll be mm -hmm. like, okay, let's go check it out. Let's go yeah, to Skinwalker yeah. Ranch. Let's go crazy. Are you saying the real ghosts are the friends we made along the way? <laughs> Why is he laughing? <laughs> yes. And I'd like to consider you. Is this, are we, a ghost. Are we doing the, the, are we doing the shave? Are we, oh, we're cheersing. I thought we were going to feed each other. I didn't know oh, We could do that, too. Wait, what? wait are, we not not crossing? are we not crossing? <laughs> Isn't that the thing? You're correct. I messed that up. What is it? I don't know, man. I'm so full of it. I think the cheese is blocking a blood vessel in my brain. You ready to get in the lightning round? Hell yeah. Let's do on. it, man. Don't need that anymore. Definitely don't need that. See? You want a souvenir? Sure. Cool. Can you uh, sign it? Other than me, who's the one person dead or alive you'd want to share your actual last meal with? Jesus. That, what are you asking him? Or her? What happens? It's fair, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I mean, so I can get ready. That's am I, am I gonna cry or am I gonna be like, this is sick? Which one of the mutant ninja turtles would you choose to share your last meal with? Raphael, because he's cool but rude. Hell yeah. And I wanna, I wanna hear a little bit of what he's got to say about the whole deal. Share it with a little bad boy? Mm -hmm. You wanna find out like what happens after you die from Raphael, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Imagine he's like pretty nihilist about the whole deal. He's like, I don't really care. Okay, okay, okay. If there's a gun to your head and if you don't hit every note perfectly, you die. What's the Guitar Hero song you're playing? Oh man. Um, the Priestess song, Lay Down. Yeah. The Priestess. Night I, and Through the Fire and Flames. 100% that song every time I play it. Hell yeah. I What's the song they're playing at your funeral? <laughs> Little Drummer Boy. <laughs> the the Beebs remix or the uh, the OG? No, the traditional. I don't know, <laughs> man. That's my favorite Christmas song. <laughs> Little Drummer Boy. No. Rumpa, no. Rumpa, um, we can't do anything. Wait, he did it? Yeah, that, I didn't make this up, right? This exists. And I think is like Busta or Coolio in it? Well, no way, Busta rhymes is or Coolio. God, it's one of them. Random. We'll play it after. We'll play it after. It's a great okay. song. I don't know, but actually, it'd probably be. Fleet Foxes something. Uh, what's your biggest fear? That's a really good question. Thanks, man, I wrote it. Marinara on my shirt. So embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God, that happens at a party? Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. I guess not being able to be there for my baby. That's yeah. kind of like my deal. And she don't need me by any shot. She has like the most amazing mom in the world, mm -hmm. but Scares me, at least. Yeah. Uh, finally, are you happy? Yes, sir. That's a quick answer. We yes, love a quick answer. Very much so. All right, Posty. One, thank you so much for coming on. Thank if you want to deliver your me. last words to that camera right there. I had a hell of a time. Um, all that for this. Hell yeah, man. This Poggers. Poggers also champion. Poggers. Pog champ. Don't be weird, champ, and keep being amazing and spreading love. There it is. And then like, and now it's done. As, Do you have a, as well, yeah. <laughs> as well too. All right, make sure to check out Maison Number no. Nine wine is absolutely delicious. Greatest wine I've ever had. I bought a whole case myself and so should you. Two cases. I bought two cases myself and so should you. I know you're going to three. No. And check out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem out in theaters on August 2nd. <laughs> Bosey, thank you so much. Thank He's got you. a new album, Austin, coming out on July 28th. Also kicking off a tour in July, a big old North American tour. Is this yes, a baby sir. going international? Yes, sir. This is an American tour. Yeah. Um, we're super excited, and I hope you guys uh, will please, please listen to the record. Um, the reptiles will kill me if you don't. Mm. <laughs> um, I love you guys, and thank you for listening, and come and see me.
I appreciate you for coming on, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bubba. Wrist up your next fire meal with the Mythical Kitchen Utensil Set. Available now at mythical.com.